Hello, my garden friends. This is Jersey Shore Lisa, and I'm from MyNJGarden.com. Usually on my channel, you see me outside in my garden doing experiments or planting or talking about what's growing now. Uh, but since it's late January, not very much is growing now. It's all sleeping and waiting for spring. Um, but in the fall, uh, late August, September, I harvested a great deal of fresh organic elderberries from my yard, from the food forest in the front yard, uh, and I froze them. Uh, that month, I made a batch of elderberry syrup, uh, and then now I'm out. I've run out. I've shared it with friends, and my family has consumed it, uh, so now I need to make some more. Luckily, I had plenty of elderberries uh, to harvest because from two bushes, I got multiple grocery bags full of elderberries, and I just harvested them all um, in bunches like this right off the bush and threw them into the bags and put them in the freezer um, ready for when I needed them, which is now in late January. So I'm planning on making another batch of elderberry syrup. Um, I do use a recipe that I found online that I like a lot. Um, it's from Mountain Rose Herbs. So I'll put a link in the description uh, to this recipe. It's terrific. And um, they, however, specify that they use dried organic elderberries. This makes sense because Mountain Rose Herbs sells dried elderberries. Um, I don't need to use dried because I have the fresh, so what I do is I double the amount um, that they call for in the recipe. The recipe calls for two cups of dried elderberries, so I use four cups, and then I will use four cups of cold water, um, two to three teaspoons organic dried ginger root. Again, I have fresh ginger root, so I'm gonna double that as well. Um, one organic cinnamon stick, so I have that. Um, a cup of raw local honey. I'm very excited about this because just this past weekend, I went to two seed swaps locally because the last Saturday in January is National Seed Swap Day. So thankfully, these events happen local to me and I was looking forward to it for so long. Um, so I did go, I swapped seeds, I got really cool seeds to try in uh, the spring and I made a blog post about it. So check it out on mynjgarden.com. Um, I'll also put a link in the description. Um, but while I was there, at the second seed swap at Insectropolis, there were vendors all around the perimeter of the seed swap, and one of them was a local apiary, a honey a beekeeper. Um, this was not only local honey, this was super local honey, because the place where the beehives were, we, you could see it from the Insectropolis Museum. It was like one of their neighbors, very close. So that's great. And you want to have local honey if you're concerned about um, seasonal environmental allergies. Um, it's a way to introduce your body in a gentle way to the, uh, the parts of the environment that are bothering you. Generally, it's pollen, things like that. And the bees use that to make this honey and you're less likely to react badly to that honey and it kind of acclimates you to having those antigens in your system. So um, people who have local environmental allergies tend to think that local honey helps with that. So I'm in, I'm gonna try it. So I bought some local honey specifically to make this elderberry syrup with that. Um, and then I also, there's an optional step where you can add a cup of vodka at the end. Um, I know that it's more for preservation purposes than anything. It'll help your elderberry syrup to last longer, um, but why not? I definitely am gonna put a little vodka in to make sure that my elderberry syrup doesn't go bad. This is kind of a labor-intensive process, so I wanna make sure that I get as much bang for my buck and it, um, really lasts as long as it possibly can. So I use Tito's Vodka, by the way, which is made in America. Um, so that's what you do. So um, 
The, this is how I harvest the berries. They look like this and they're tiny. They're very small. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. They're small and they're very ripe. Um, and it's not so easy. You do get messy when you just try to pull them off of the bunch and put them in your bowl. So I tend to use a fork to do this and just kind of scrape them off the bunch and they fall into the bowl and all those little stems are left behind. There are a couple of other methods that you can use to get the berries off of those little bunches. Um, a friend of mine says that her favorite way to do it is to throw all these bunches into a, a bag, throw the whole thing in the freezer and then kind of bust them up when they're still frozen. That way the berries release and fall to the bottom of the bag and you can take out the big clumpy stems. Um, I did that once and it really, it seemed to take so long to clean the berries afterward and remove all those tiny, tiny bits of stems. Um, I'm gonna try it again this way and see which way I like better. I have a feeling I'm going to like just scraping them off the stems either way. It's not a quick process. It takes a while. Give yourself a few hours to make elderberry syrup, but it'll totally be worth it. Um, and the reason I say that is because elderberry syrup is full of antioxidants. And it's known, studies have been done, that it stimulates your immune system. In fact, some people who suffer from autoimmune disease may want to be careful or at least cognizant of the fact that it does stimulate your immune system and you may experience a bit of an autoimmune flare afterward because it does help rev you up and get you going. I have not had those kinds of problems. I do suffer from autoimmune disease. I have Hashimoto's myself, um, but I find that elderberry syrup is beneficial for me and it does not stimulate an autoimmune flare. Um, however, very good for you, your immune system, helps you to get over colds and um, respiratory problems or anything that's bothering you. It helps you to get over it more quickly and it definitely helps to prevent those things from latching on and taking hold of you in the first place. So. We're going to take advantage of the preventative properties of elderberry today and make some syrup to, to protect the family and friends um, and share with everyone. So at the end of this process, and you can see on the recipe, but you basically boil the water and the berries for about 30 or 40 minutes. This is not a rolling boil, this is a simmer. So 30 to 40 minutes then you turn off the heat and you let it steep for uh, an hour. And then you strain the berries and herbs, you add the herbs in, the ginger and the cinnamon stick um, while it's boiling. Um, and then you strain them using cheesecloth or a funnel or a cotton bag. Um, so I did that and just do this very carefully. The last time that I did it, you, you should know not to rush this step. You end up having a lot of little skins and seeds. You can see this is two cups of berries. I'm gonna need four cups of berries, but there's, I don't know how well you can see in there, but they're just dense little wonderful fruits. And as much syrup as you're going to get at the end, you're gonna have a lot of skins and seeds and things at the end of the boiling and steeping process. So when you strain it into that cheesecloth, carefully gather it together and just take your time and massage it and get all that juice out of there. You're gonna have so much left to throw out. You definitely don't want to um, waste any of that wonderful syrup that's in there that's so helpful for you just take your time and really get as much of the liquid out of there as you can and then get rid of that i, w I didn't throw it out um the last time i made it i did put it into my compost um which works out beautifully just keep in mind that all those wonderful seeds won't germinate after this because you've cooked them like crazy that's something you should know too elderberry don't eat them in quantity when they're raw. They will uh, give you an upset stomach. 
um, and in quantity, those seeds can be toxic. So what you really want to do is use them in baking and cooking and making syrups like this, then they're very good for you. But the stems and leaves and berries, when they're raw, not so good for you. Um, they're good for the birds. The birds like them and they could beat you to them if you don't harvest them in time. But just be sure to cook them before you consume them yourself. Um, and once you've cooked them, the seeds are no longer viable. You throw them in the compost and spread it around your yard. And if your compost didn't quite get hot enough to burn off all the seeds, don't worry about it. Those seeds won't be going anywhere or making little elderberry bushes all around your yard. Um, so there's that. Uh, so then once it's all cooled down, um, you're going to add in that honey, uh, mix it when it's just about a little warmer than room temperature. You'll feel the side of your bowl and it'll be warm to the touch. You can add in your honey. That's going to preserve all that wonderful live enzyme activity in the honey uh, and not kill it completely. Um, so you, that's when you stir in the honey, you add the vodka, and then you can bottle your elderberry syrup in sterilized glass bottles or in jars. I use mason jars. Um, once I put them in the put the syrup in the clean mason jars, I put it right in my freezer um, until I need it. So I'll have one jar that's in the fridge as I'm using it, and the rest will be in my freezer. Once I'm done with the jar in the fridge, I take out the next jar so that I know that it's always super fresh. Um, my elderberry syrup, because I add the vodka and I add the honey, which also has antibacterial properties, I would not hesitate to say that it lasts in the fridge for up to three months. Beyond that, you're on your own. I can't um, speak to how long it lasts after that. Uh, but that's why I keep it in the freezer until I need to use it. It doesn't last three months for me because we take it every day preventatively and if we need it, if one of us does come down with something. So, um, and it's delicious by the way. Uh, so you don't have to worry about kind of holding your nose and taking something that's not tasty. Um, when it comes to the ginger and the berry, that strong um, berry juice flavor, um, and then the honey which sweetens it, man, you can't go wrong, that's good stuff. <laughs> so I strongly suggest that you, number one, grow your own elderberries. They're so easy to grow. Um, the shrub itself, is a 10 to 12 foot fountain shaped shrub. It's a large shrub. So it does take up some real estate in the landscape, but the flowers are just beautiful. They bloom in early summer. These big umbrella flowers that are like these bunches of berries, only they're small white flowers over the whole thing. The flowers are edible actually. So people use them to uh, flavor beverages and baked goods um, and then I've even heard of people using the flowers to make fritters uh, but I haven't done that myself but I tasted Angry Orchard made an awesome elderberry flower elderflower cider as a limited batch one year a few years ago and it was so good oh I loved it um, so I think that would be amazing to be able to do. Once my apple trees start producing, that's in my future. Uh, but uh, the elder flowers are edible, but I wouldn't eat them because they smell outrageous. They make the whole block smell good. They are my favorite smelling flower. And then after those tiny flowers fall, the berries start to form uh, and you harvest them in late August and September here in New Jersey. Um, the shrub, you will get berries by your second maybe, but probably your third year. I would say your third year you'll get berries. They are a fast growing shrub. So within that time, you could put a, a sapling this big or a seedling this big in the ground and you'll have a 12 foot shrub by three years in. Um, they're fantastic. And uh, the you can coppice the trees and then they the the shrubs and then they will grow back and they are hollow so they have like this pith in the center almost like a fig uh branch 
so you can make crafts out of them and instruments and things like that. It's really interesting. But uh, they're great shrubs for the yard. So I encourage you to grow your own and to use what you grow because they are productive and they are so useful and so healthy. So thank you for joining me today. And I'm going to get back to this because it's going to take me a while. And I'm going to make some elderberry syrup. I hope you do too. Please leave me a comment if you ever have or if you have any questions about it. Um, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you again soon. Here's to dreaming of spring. Bye everyone.